Hello and you're all very welcome along to the Champ.ie Christmas Racing Special 2023. Ireland's premier horse racing podcast in association with Boyle Sports, Gorham Park Racecourse and Syndicate Stop Racing. Coming up on our Christmas special, Barry speaks with special guest Patrick Mullins and the lads look ahead to five key races over the festive period as well as giving their naps and best bets of the Christmas. Inside the final 200 yards, it's Stateman from Boban coming right over to the near side is Charger, but it's Stateman continuing his season's progress in the two final division. Wins the Madison for Paul Town, and who's thrilled with that? If you haven't already, be sure to like this video and subscribe to the Champ.ie YouTube channel as it helps to get horse racing content out there to the wider audience. We look forward to reading all your Christmas hashtag five cast selections in the comments below. Get the mulled wine and mince pies ready and sit back and enjoy the show. And once again, a very happy Christmas to you all. Oil Sports. Don't just bet. Choose wisely. Well, happy Christmas. Welcome along to Champ Tarai. It is uh, the show that's uh, been giving lots and lots of winners each and every week. And we're going to hope that we can do the very, very same again for you this week. And of course, uh, we've got uh, today's uh, show on the Christmas show each and every week brought to you in association with Gorham Park Racecourse, Boyle Sports and Syndicates Dot Racing. Uh, don't forget as well uh, to subscribe and like uh, and uh, comment, of course, and put in your five cats uh, selections for the show in the section below there that uh, Barry is uh, uh, pointing down to. Well, gentlemen, firstly, I suppose, happy Christmas uh, and all the rest. And uh, delighted to see you all made the effort with the old Christmas jumpers. Someone else must have lost the brief this week. But uh, <laughs> happy Christmas, lads. Happy Christmas, Dave. And to you, Roland. Happy Christmas, lads. Yeah, great time of the year. It really is a great time of the year. Um, I suppose, lads, we're going to start off. What are we most looking forward to over the Christmas, Roland? What, 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 what? What's the race that stands out for you and what are you most looking forward to seeing? Uh, the, the saddles now, uh, David, like it's, it's, um, it used to be the, or was the King George earlier in the week, but the, the saddles is just, a, is turned into an outrageous race. Obviously, Jerry Colomb going there now, Gallop and Deschamps confirmed earlier in the race, fast or slow. You have last year's winner conflated and you have a few interesting ones as well after that, you know? So, uh, I think that's taken up to be a real cracker. So, um, very much looking forward to that. I do like King George, I have to say. I love the pace they go there uh, and the jumping test it turns into. I think that's always a spectacle. Um, so even though Jerry Colomb's not going there, we still have Alaho going over and Shishkin, what's going to happen there, etc. So, yeah, but that was probably the two highlights, but uh, very much looking forward. I love this time. I love just sitting down now once the declarations come in on Saturday and uh, if you can find a couple of hours just to relax and look through all the cards with it. When I have beer, you can't beat that. You know, that's one of my favorite times of the year. So, uh, looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah, and I have to agree with you. It's great just to sit down, scroll through the final declarations, make your selections, get your bets in place. And one man that we're going to have on the show later on today, the, to, later on in today's show or this evening show, whatever time you're watching this podcast, is we've got one Patrick Mullins secured for an interview later on with Barry, and he's going to be giving us a great insight into the Mullins camp for Christmas. Barry, before we kick off the show, what are you most looking forward to? Well, I think the 28 is a big day at Leperstown, isn't it? With both the Savills and the Christmas hurdle. And so uh, really have to say, David, top three in the Gold Cup market, as Rona mentioned in the uh, Savills chase. It's going to be fascinating. But I heard Zeb Brian Atchison coming out today mentioning that Tremor was an option for Jerry Colomb. First, he was going to Kempton. Then he was going to Leperstown. Now it looks like he's going to Tremor. doesn't matter where he turns up, in my view. He won't beat fast or slow. But we'll come on to that on the... Uh, had a section, of course, we're going to look at the, the five races that we've laid out, the five big races over uh, the Christmas period. And so we're going to give our best bets at the end. So lots to look forward to in terms of, I suppose, younger horses, David, just to mention as well over the Christmas period. Um, Patrick will give us some insight as well. Some nice bumper types. Cantico is a horse I'm looking forward to seeing running in a bumper, um, possibly in that four-year-old bumper on Stevens's day. Could be a nice type for that. And a couple of nice juveniles as well. Ethical Diamond cost a pretty penny. Uh, was a winner at Limerick on the flat over a mile and four. Supposed to have schooled well. So um, we'll be discussing takeaways, I suppose, from the interview with Patrick. Um, that looks a nice type to go hurdling with. And uh, obviously, that future novice is hurdling. I think Roland has a big price, juicy selection picked out in that race as well. But I think it's a Savile's chase, David. An Irish point in the Christmas hurdle. I'm fascinated to see this horse stepping up in trip to uh, three miles for the first time. 
Well, I know lots of people from last week's show are going to be very, very interested indeed in hearing your guys' best bets and nap selections because certainly for many, Christmas came early last week if you were watching champ.ie. Right, it's time to kick on. Barry, throw up there on the screen for us a look at the big races that we're going to take a look at. Five in total this week. The King George V, of course. Uh, what a race this is. Uh, the Grade 1 at Kempton at 2.30 on the 26th. Then two races on the 27th, the Welsh Grand National. And uh, we've also got the big listed handicap chase at uh, Leopardstown to look forward to on the 27th. The Christmas Hurdle, the Grade 1 at Leopardstown on the 28th. And, of course, the Savills Chase as well. And, of course, Patrick Mullins is our special guest. And, of course, don't forget as well, we've got a fantastic prize to give away. We're just going to get that in uh, nice and early for those of you because the Tiestes Chase, that's going to come up in January. And we've got a tremendous prize for you. It's going to be an overnight stay in Langton's Hotel in Kilkenny, uh, race tickets to the races, and even a bit of transport out in and out from Langton's. And, of course... To be able to chance to win, you enter by subscribing to the channel and entering your five cast selections. And on the 29th of December, Barry, the lucky winner will be announced. Right. More on that later on. Ronan Groom, let's kick the show off because the King George. Look, OK, you've mentioned Jerry Kalam is not going. We have Alaho in it. He's a horse I really like. Um, I think he's going to take the world of beating in it. But there's so many question marks over so many of the runners because Brave Man's Game... He's been good and he's been, he's done it in the past, as we all know. We have Shishkin in there. Will he start? So many questions. It's intriguing. Absolutely. It's intriguing for the questions, I suppose, uh, Dave. You're, you're dead on. Like, like Brave Man's game, uh, I'm sure at the start of the season, Paul Nichols was working back from this race. And then they decided just randomly to go for, for the bet fair chase. And Nichols was stressing that week. He's like, this isn't an afterthought. But it 100% was. I think the owner just put the foot down there and said, I want to run. And it's just kind of derailed uh, uh, Paul's plans kind of with, with the horse. Now, if anyone can get him back and, and get him on on on, 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 on kilter again, even, it's got to be Paul Nichols. Um, but I just I just don't like the prep with that run. I think Nichols probably would have liked to have just to 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 kind of batten down the hatches earlier and, and train him specifically for the race. And he had a hard race at Haydock. And we know that can take a lot out of horses, that that, that ground. Alaho, I've always been fascinated to 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 mm. see him in a King George, but I was just wonder is this coming a bit too late? You know, um, he was okay in his comeback. He didn't do anything hugely flashy. Okay, fair enough. It was his first run in a long time, um, and, and you know it's interesting that he is coming over. But I wonder is it just too late? And then you're just wondering, you're picking down the field and wondering who you can take them on with. Jerry Colomb obviously would have been really interesting if he if he ran, but they're not going to go there, um, possibly on account of the ground. Out of the big two, marginally I go at Brave Man's game. It's not a betting race for me anymore. I was interested in a couple, Royal Pagai and, 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 and even Hewitt, I thought might be interested. I just, I can't trust them at big prices and I don't want to just throw, 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 throw any money on them at, at that sort of thing, you know, so... For me, it's Brave Man's game just about out of the top two, but it's a no betting race at the moment, Dave. What I love about the King George always is it's the kind of race when, you, when it comes along. You know, there's so many huge expectations, Barry. You know, horses going in there, trainers, connections. Before they ever run in the King George, oh, he's a Gold Cup horse, he's this, he's that, he's the other. Mm. And come the 26th, uh, so many, so many bubbles can be burst. For you, how's this King George going to play out? Well, like we were rolling on a couple of things. The first thing is it might just have come too late in Alejo's career because he's always been a horse that I thought the King George would suit. It's probably everyone's the same, you know, the way his style of racing, uh, a sharper track, you know, a flat track like Kempton, um, you know, the, the pace they go in the uh, the King George. I think it's interesting, the pace angle in this particular race. There is plenty of pace on with the likes of the real whacker. Kempton could suit him, um, you know, the way he jumps, the way he travels through his races. I think he'll be a better horse uh, off the back of that, uh, his run. I think there was a genuine excuse uh, for uh, Pat Neville, uh, the horse obviously was a little bit lame after the race and there was uh, a genuine excuse came to light. So I think he's going to be a better horse. He's going to be up there uh, towards the front. Rona mentioned Hewick. It's a uh, nicer ground. He likes to get on with things as well. Um, the nicer ground will suit um, Hewick as well. So uh, he'll be up there on the pace. I'm sure he'll be enjoying himself and Alaho as well. So I was looking at the race and thought it might set up for Shishkin if he starts. And I don't see any reason why 
he won't start. I mean, he's only done that once in his career. Um, I'm willing to forgive him at the price. I thought five to one was was very generous. Now, I've kind of had a mixed relationship with Shishkin. Once loved them for a supreme novices hurdle and backed him on the day, and then obviously fell out of love when an ergamy came along over fences. Uh, but one thing I think about Shishkin is stepping up. I think Nicky Henderson has more or less said it himself. I think personally he's blown in the horse over the wrong trip for the last three or four years. Um, certainly three years. And I think uh, he's still unexposed stepping up and trip to to, to three miles. Uh, well, he's not stepping up and trip for the first time to three miles. He's a point to point winner. But he did win over fences over three miles for the very first time at entry um, last year. He's four from four at Kempton. I think the drying ground is certainly going to suit. It's good to soft ground now, but not very much rain forecast between now and the 26th. And uh, obviously, Nicky's record in the race as well, like long run, uh, won the race uh, for Nicky Henderson, might bite as well. He was a big, big eye catcher in the Ryanair chase uh, last year. I mean, he, he arguably should have won the race last year, but he absolutely took one out of it coming down the hill. Uh, I think it was uh, three out where he, he made an absolutely shuddering mistake and it ended all chance. And I think if you look at his most recent form as well, obviously uh, at three miles or at entry, he showed his stay in power there. I think he does his best work at the finish and he has been doing that for quite some time. So at the price, five to one, I think the race is set up for him, David, and I wouldn't be surprised if he went and won this. Seven to four about Alaho. You like his chances, David. I'm interested to know because favourites record in the race. I think four winning favourites in the last 12 years. Uh, but he looks the ideal type. But is he a bit short? Uh, look, now he, he probably is. He was, I think, a really good price maybe over a week ago. You, there was five and six to one floating around about him if you had fancied him back then. I had a little nibble at six to one on him when he was six. So look, at the value. My my big concern with the King George and the runners that are in it, like, I mean, you talk about Shishkin and I'd like Ronan's thoughts on this. You know, a horse that did what he did last time out, like, as, as Nico De Boinville and Nicky Henderson are saying, look, we don't know what he's going to do. Like, I mean, he can go there, he can get down to the start. And, you know, Barry's saying five to one's a bit of value, but nearly like five to one for a bit of value. You're going to take five to one about a horse that does a potential that he's just going to plant himself at the start. I'm not saying he, there's a chance he'll never do it again, but always from a punting point of view, you're ruling out all of these things, aren't you? I don't think, yeah, and you're right, Dave, because I think he's a quirky horse anyway, isn't he? Like, he's kind of does that during the races. He, he was never really going a yard in the, in the Ryanair and he was making those clangers last season. And he, yeah, he looked good at Aintree and, and obviously he's talented on his day. But and but surely it has to be a worry, uh, Barry, that the horse hasn't had a run. Like, Nicky's been at pains to say this. Uh, like, he would have loved to get a run into the horse. And he was like, yeah, Constitution Hill is fine. We can run him. It's two-mile hurdle. is a big difference than, than going to the King George, uh, jumping test that it is, etc. Like, would that not concern wants- you... Uh, yeah, he, he's won four times fresh in the past. Um, obviously, I think the record of horses going straight to the King George um, wouldn't be the best. But also, I think 10 of the last, just a little stat I had documented, 10 of the last King George winners have actually had at least one run at Kempton. He's unbeaten at Kempton, four from four. Alho's never run there. Yeah, but look, is it not like fair to say like it's different a horse going... Um, you know, going fresh to a race, but to a King George going like it's a completely different race. You're, you know, there's horses here with, as we've mentioned at the top of the preview, with gold cup credentials. They, they want to show here that, you know, yes, we're in with a chance come March. So, like, I just think there's too, too many question marks about him going into the race to be confident in taking the five to one value in the race. But look, it's intriguing. And look, you were saying, yeah, I liked Alaho. I think Alaho is a very, very solid jumper. I just think there's question marks over them. And I know you've put a case for the real whacker that was solid excuses the last time, but it's that kind of I think of he's race, the man. danger, David. I think he's the danger, the real whacker, because I mentioned the genuine excuse. I think Kempton is arguably a track that might even suit him more than Cheltenham. Uh, and obviously going into uh, going into the to the, uh, the handicap over the two and a half miles, lots of people were saying it was the wrong trip. I thought uh, potentially it was a good move going back in trip because I think his biggest asset is his jumping. I think Kempton will suit him. Uh, but the interesting thing is um, there's a couple here that like to make it and could he get maybe hassled or taken on for the lead early, which I don't think is going to help his chances. Right, well, look, it's an intriguing race. Alaho for me, Ronan? Oh, just about brave man's game, uh, but not a, not a confident folk day. And Barry? Shishkin goes into the five cast, five to one. Yeah. I think he'll be being, I think yeah, by the time the winner goes over the winning line, yeah, Shushkin could be getting showered down in the stable area. But uh, let's see what happens. Right, let's move on because we've got a cracking race to look forward to on the 27th at Chepstow. 
It is the Three Mile Six Furlongs Welsh uh, Grand National. This is always a superb race, great spectacle. And it looks tricky. Barry, we'll come to you first time. I uh, know you love these big staying uh, type races. So what is it that stands out for you in the Welsh National? I think Rona mentioned on the Monday show, the uh, the Welsh National Paddy Power Double is always something he attempts every single year. So anyone that's uh, following this part of the, the podcast, obviously the next two races upcoming, that'd be some treat, wouldn't it? That'd certainly cure the hangover on the 27th, David. Um, I really like one in here, in this Welsh National, I have to say. And uh, dating back to, just to give you a picture of the race itself, uh, three of the last four winners were Welsh trained. Uh, so the home team have done well. Um, I think, obviously, this is going to be absolute bottomless. It'll be interesting to see if it even goes ahead because um, I was just looking at the uh, the weather forecast. We've 49 mils of rain scheduled. Wow. And it's already soft ground uh, before the 27th. So <clears throat> I thought that was an interesting one. Seven of the last 10 winners have, have actually been shorter in the betting than 10 to 1. They've been single figures. Um, so... I think you need to have a lightweight in the race. I think, uh, obviously, favourites have a, a decent enough record in the race. Uh, certainly, uh, those that are up there towards the front end of the, the market. And the one I like has been very well supported. We had Colin Tizard on the Champ Daddy podcast, believe it or not, in November 2020. And we asked him for a horse to follow. And I remember his response. There's one just gone by me on the gallops, he said. Um, and, the, and the horse is called Autonomous Cloud. He was only a four-year-old at the time. He won a bumper afterwards. He's now trained by Fergal O'Brien, very likely raced individual. Um, and he's the one I like. He's a big, strap and imposing horse that I think uh, Connections have probably had a race like this in mind for, for a long, long time. And I think uh, looking at, I suppose, Fergal O'Brien's record at the moment, he's 20%, uh, 28% strike rate. So he's uh, certainly in cracking form. Um, this, uh, this autonomous crowd uh, cloud, should I say, likely raced individual. He's, he looks tailor-made for a race like the Welsh National. He's uh, on a hat-trick bid. He's won his last two starts, both a new Toxeter. Uh, so all his all his, act- his wins have been going left-handed, which I think is interesting. Uh, he jumps for fun. And I think there's probably a lot more to come from. Very lightly raced individual. And uh, he's a horse that I suppose connections, I think, would be quite excited about. He's been very well supported as well, David, in the market. We were seeing 12 to 1. Now we're seeing 7 to 1. I really like his chances. He's a low weight. I mentioned uh, the horses, I suppose, towards the bottom end of the uh, the weights. It can be quite important. And he's a horse that I quite like in this uh, Welsh National. I'm quite keen on him, actually. Yes, always an intriguing race, Ronan. And I suppose, Barry, they're starting off with the weather forecast the way it is. That's a, a huge concern. But you're going to be looking at horses with, uh, you know, really good form in, uh, in in the going and in the conditions. What in the race for you do you like? <laughs> I kind of I'm doing exactly what you're saying, David. But going against what Barry's saying, I'm back to top weight here. Is I've got two uh, selections for the race. Um, I'm back to top weight. The previous winner, I will do it. Um, I just think he's really interesting. He's uh, 13 pounds higher than when he won the race, obviously in 2021. But he's such a lightly raced horse. He's only won, ran six times over fences. He's won four of them. He will love the conditions. Like like it was soft ground when he won here. Um in 21 and he won a, a classic chase on heavy ground like and so he is absolutely made for this trip like and yeah i get what barry's saying the lightweight might help and there are a few progressive horses down the bottom of the market that could just be ahead of their marks but i would value the being there done it kind of credential higher than that and he's clearly been laid, laid, like, um, laid out for the race he was second in the handicap hurdle at entry that was a really good run um, and that just haven't tuned up. Sam Thomas's horse is in really good form. He's at twenty six percent this season. Um, I love him as a target trainer. I think he does really well, especially with the staying chasers. Um, I think he's got a really good chance. Like like top weights have won this race. Like so Elegant Escape, Native River, uh, obviously a very good horse. But uh, you say he's top weight. He's only off a mark of one hundred and fifty three. He's not been asked to do anything off like one sixty plus or anything. And as I said, he's lightly raced and he's been there and done it. I just think. I think he's. Uh, I think he should be favourite, to be honest with you. I think he's widely available at seven to one. Uh, Shambard was the other horse, horse I wanted to back. Um, Venetia Williams. He's officially the best handicapped horse in the race after his win uh, in Aintree, where he like he bolted up there. He beat Coco Beach, the Troy Town winner, by by thirteen lengths. Like I'm banking on him improving for this step up and trip. Um, and I think the only reason his price is as high as it is now is because people are worried that that race was a bit too soon and, you know, he's he's, he's coming here only whatever. 
you know, what is it, 18 days later. But if you look through his record, he's won loads of times. He takes his racing really well. And he's won loads of times off like eight day gaps, nine day gaps. So I don't think that's a worry at all. And look, he's an 11 year old. He's he's not saving anything. He's run loads of times. He's pretty exposed, but he's in the form of his life. He likes soft ground. And if Long. he steps up or if he improves for this step up and trip, he's got a huge chance. And and I just think the price he is now as well, I think you can get freely get 12 to 1, 14 to 1. I think that's a fine price as well. So they're the two I, I've taken against the field. David, just I think it's worth mentioning, there's a couple of these actually well in uh, on, I suppose, looking at race conditions. Nassalam, um, he obviously was a winner last time over the course. The horse I mentioned, Autonomous Cloud, he's actually four pounds well in as well at, at the weights and, and, and based on his rating. So he's on a hat trick, but I think it's worth noting as well, the extra six furlongs, lots of these have form over three miles. Autonomous Cloud being one, he's stepping up another six furlongs in trips, so... You know, what sort of improvement is that going to bring out? And I think on these conditions, he's definitely my pick in the race. Actually, very keen on his chances. Um, seven to one, I think, is more than fair. Wouldn't be surprised if he started favoured and said uh, both his wins over fences have been left handed, uh, of course, uh, on heavy and soft ground. So I think uh, the more rain, the better. Yeah, well, let's hope the weather forecast doesn't uh, play havoc with that Welsh national. Right, uh, that's uh, the Welsh National taken care of and also the King George with three more races uh, to discuss, which is the big handicap chase at Leopardstown. That's on the 27th, the Christmas hurdle, of course, at Leopardstown and the Savills chase, the grade one. Before we head into our first ad break, Barry, and of course, uh, the show in association with Gorham Park Racecourse, Boyle Sports and Syndicate Start Racing. Gordon Park Racecourse, the premier racetrack in the southeast of Ireland, is located on the outskirts of Kilkenny City. Gordon is your number one choice for corporate days out, stag and hint party events, and an overall great local racing experience. Known as the race that stops the county, the famous Goffs Thaestes Chase 2024 takes place on Thursday, the 25th of January. In the finish of the Goffs Thaestes, invitation only, and Ruby Walsh on the near side for Willie Mullins' seventh win of the race. Invitation only has paid now for his own With packed crowds expected once again this January, you can book your early bird tickets online today. Visit gorenpark.ie online, click the link in the champ.ie podcast video description, or scan the QR code on screen to purchase right now. Eddie and the team look forward to welcoming you all to Gorham Park Racecourse this winter. Yes, well, some uh, great sponsors uh, involved with the show this year, Gorham Park, Boyle Sports and Syndicates, uh, Dot Racing. And, uh, well, uh, information, of course, with the Tiestes Chase coming up in mid-January. We're all looking forward to that one, Barry. And, of course, we'll have plenty on some of the prices as well for uh, from Boyle Sports ahead of the big action. And, of course, you can save yourself 25% uh, on the early bird offer on Tiestes Day uh, by, of course... Uh, getting involved with the race that stops the county here, the Goffs Thaestes Day. It's on Thursday, the 25th of January, and those early bird Thaestes, they offer 25% off by using the barcode uh, below. So listen, great just to have to all mention, those. David, just to mention, for yes. syndicates, that racing as well, obviously, um, still time to get those Christmas presents. 50 euro off, David, uh, your first share with uh, Syndicate. That uh, I suppose if you're looking to get to the uh, the big days, uh, let's look at those uh, trainers up on screens. Willie Mullins, Gordon Elliott, Henry de Bromhead, Joseph O'Brien, John McConnell, Gavin Cromwell, and more. Pick your horse on the website, syndicates.racing, and enter uh, the, uh, of course, all caps into uh, the, uh, when, when you do pick your horse, obviously, at the checkout, enter all caps champ into, uh, of course, uh, the uh, discount um, the discount bar there and hit apply uh, to avail of that offer. 50 euro off your first share. I think it's uh, certainly a cracking uh, cracking offer for those looking for late Christmas presents like myself, uh, David. I'm usually a Christmas Eve man. What about you? Yeah, well, I'm hoping for one of those uh, nice... Uh, Ronan and I both are actually hoping that we're going to get an envelope in the post with... Uh, as the head man of champ.ie with a nice uh, intro into Jack Syndicate, the Syndicate Start Racing. So, Ronan, if you get yours before mine, just give me a text there on the WhatsApp group. I'd be delighted to know because I'm very, very much excited 
Oh, yes. Very much looking forward to this, you know. It, like, on the meter burns. In. Absolutely. Right, let's move on because it is our Christmas Champ.ie podcast. We hope you're enjoying the show so far. Three more races to look at. And uh, the big three-mile handicap chase, a listed contest, the Paddy Power, of course, on the 27th. What do we like here, chaps? That's uh, Barry, get your thoughts firstly on this one. Yeah, a couple of stats again to fire into the mix, David. It's uh, JP, great record in the race. Uh, he's only two entered up at this stage. It'd be interesting to see if both are declared. I'd imagine Mark Walsh will write Gars the sell. I will come on to him in just a moment. Um, we mentioned uh, shorter price winners have done well in the, the Welsh National, but I think uh, certainly bigger price horses have done well in, in the Paddy Power Handicap Chase. Five of the last eight winners, 10 to one or bigger. Saw a big price winner of it last year, obviously, uh, with uh, Real Steel, who was uh, Ronald Groom's favourite horse once upon a time on the show. Tipped him up for the Gold Cup, I think, once upon a time. Came in there hard held on the bridle as he turned in, but didn't stay. Okay, five of the last eight winners have carried under uh, 11 stone as well. Uh, so I think a uh, big handicap chase over three miles at Leopardstown. Uh, we're, we're certainly scheduled rain as well at uh, Leopardstown on the 27th. Uh, I think there's something like 90, 25 mil of rain before the 28th. So a lot of that is coming, 19 mil in total. So I think you're going to have, I think you said, Roland, you liked one here, but you checked the weather forecast before you come on. Uh, that horse was Chemical Energy, likes decent ground. I think probably against him at this stage. Gordon has a couple of chances in here. My shortlist, Gars the so. That was interesting in the McManus Silks right down the bottom of the weights. He's going to sneak in. I'd imagine Mark Walsh will write him. Ida's boy campaign didn't go to plan last year for Noel Mead. Thought he was interesting at 16 to 1. But in real steel, he's just two pounds higher uh, this year uh, than what he won uh, off 131 last year. So he's interesting once again. He's had three runs uh, to prep for this. But Gars the so is the pick. And confident each way pick. I think 10 to 1 won't last long, Dave. I think Mark Walsh likely to... Uh, to pick him, he's he's had a pipe opener over two miles, uh, one over two miles seven on really testing ground at Navin as a novice hurdler. Um, he's a point to point winner, jumps very, very safely. I think he jumps well. He, he's a three miler basically and had his first start over two miles behind Mr. Policeman, who I think is a horse that we're going to be hearing a lot more about this year. And I thought he was good, you know, I thought it was a good run, uh, a nice prep for this, jumps well. And uh, both wins have been at Navin on testing ground and he's, he's going to carry just one pound higher than what the winner carried last year so he's going to be right down the bottom of the weights I thought he looked well treated and JP has mentioned clearly a decent record has won four of the last eight renewals yeah well he's given away 32 million hasn't he in the last week so he'll be hoping to recoup some of the uh, money there uh, that he has uh, given uh, to the Gaelic Athletics uh, Association with uh, the counties all receiving 1 million it's always a great spectacle Ronan I love this race over Christmas I really think it's a real cracker what for you stands out in this one so so, so Barry just mentioned I, I really like chemical energy for this Dave but I just worried about the ground as as, as Barry said there's a load of rain due in on uh, the night before and during the day so it might just turn out soft now it does take a lot of rain to turn Leopardstown soft it's a freakish kind of giant track so I will be keeping an eye on it on the day to see what it's like see what the, the times are like after the first races etc but I would back them on soft ground on decent ground, I think this horse has got a big pot in him off 147. Like if you look at the National Hunt Chase last season, that was one he was just really unlucky in. You know, he he the horse in the front fell uh, Maller Mission, uh, but I think he was coming to get him at the time, and he probably could have done with him there just as something to aim at, you know. And the next thing he found himself in front, Jamie Codd jumped the last, and he got done by uh, Patrick Mons, who was staying on. It was near identical to the time back in focus won the National Hunt Chase and Tofino Bay had a faller at the last and he just got idled in front and got nabbed by uh, Patrick Mons again, obviously this time on Galliard de Menil. But anyway, the form of that race has worked out really well. Like Galliard de Menil went on and finished third in the Grand National. Maller Mission has been second in the Coral Gold Cup. So they've done it in huge handicaps. This is a huge handicap and I think Chemical Energy would definitely be interesting off a mark of 147. But as I said, just the ground is the worry with him. So in that case... I'm going to go with Owen Griffin's horse here, Jody Ted. Uh, I think he's really interesting. He's basically coming into this on, on, on in the form of his life. Like he, he won over hurdles. He won a handicap chase down at Limerick really well. And then he won the, the part times qualifier at Punchstown. Like he dotted up there as well. He only won a length and a half, but he was a good value for it. Uh, so he's basically in the form of his life. And he's really consistent form last season as well. Like he ran really well in a couple of big handicap chases. Uh, or two miles and up at three miles as well. And 
I just think he's well handicapped still off a mark of 134. He's progressing really fast. I think the soft ground three miles would be absolutely fine for him. I think he's interesting in in, in longer term. He could be very interesting for the for temps, especially if he goes well here. Uh, he'd get into that race as it is now off his mark of 126. So uh, keep an eye on him for that. But as I said, I just <coughs> think he's in form, progressive, uh, laid out for this race probably since uh, since Limerick. They went over hurdles, protect his chase mark. And uh, I just think he's too big a price. He's like freely available at 14 to 1 there. And I think that's too big. Yeah, it's a cracking race, really is to look forward to. And uh, it really is uh, one of the great races over the Christmas at uh, Leopardstown. Right, let's move on. Let's keep the show moving on nicely. The next race we're going to look at is this uh, Grade 1 Christmas hurdle. This is over three miles. <coughs> And, uh, of course, this race on the 28th of December. By now, you should have had plenty of turkey sandwiches and the remains of the turkey should be coming to an end. And hopefully, by now, winners will be, uh, the pockets will be full. And uh, for the Christmas hurdle, that we can all lump in on something. What will that be, Mr. Groom? (laughs) Uh, I think Home by the Lee is pretty solid here, David, to be honest with you. We have very conflicting views, so I'm looking forward to hearing Basil's passionate case that he's going to make for Irish Point but to me I just don't get the clamour for this horse to go up to three miles just every year there's a horse and people just seem to get real excited about running getting that horse up to three miles and this year that there's an official one and it has to be Irish Point, people just losing their minds, this horse has to go up to three miles like fair enough he might be better over three miles, he might improve for a trip but he might not either, like it's a real question, it's a real 50-50 thing until he goes and does it, like for me three mile hurdling is like quite a specialist thing it's it's a unique kind of division it's a, it's a funny type of horse that tends to go well in it they're they're usually a bit quirky you have to you know go different paces during the race you have to be able to settle and then go some of them hit the best ones used to hit a flat spot didn't they the likes of big bucks and english driver and then they come good then at the end of the race paisley park off and does that as well finishes the race really strong but there's a quirk to them i think as well so I'm not sure. I think Irish Point's a bit of a classy type. And when what, what happens to him up at three miles, I don't know. As I said, he might be better, but he might not either. So the one, I just think Home by the Lee is really rock solid. Like they, they, You can't tell me this is as strong a race as it was last year. And his run at Nav, and uh, albeit he didn't win, he probably ran as well as he did <clears> in the race last season when he won that this Mullen hurdle, uh, finishing in behind Bob Ollinger there. And... Um, Zana here, like that was a fine run. Joseph Bryan's horse is in good form. His jumpers are going well. Just think he's rock solid. And I think he's just probably been a bit underrated by the market here because of this Irish point chat um, <clears> to get him up to three miles. So uh, looking forward to seeing what Basil can fight me back with there. But uh, for me, owned by the least, more solid option here. Might as well come Mr. in straight Ryan. away, David. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, no, I think it's, uh, it is interesting that every single year, I think Rona made a good point, every year there's a horse that's going to be the stairs hurdle horse. And, and yes. for that, and, and I don't think it's going to be Irish point. I think it's Tiupu. I think he's resting in his box ready for Cheltenham. Uh, but, but you know what I mean? T- you know what I mean? Like the, yeah. the, the, there's always a two mile horse that people want to come up to three miles. Yeah, you know, like and, a novice, you know what I mean? and especially given the fact that the division probably hasn't been the strongest for the last 10, 15 years, really, in truth. Um, you know, since big books, we we haven't had that real star in, in, in that division. But um I think this race is certainly winnable for starters. I mean, you don't have a flooring porter in it this year who, who was probably the best we've seen this side of the water in this division for uh, quite some time. Cannot understand, but Rona might tell us later on why he's gone chasing. Um, classical dream, obviously, in flooring good, porter. Uh, they jeweled. They jeweled. Um, uh, uh, in this particular race over the last couple of years, and I think there was a there was a complete burn up in it, in it wasn't there? A couple of years ago, there was a lot uh, spoken about the start with Danny Mullins and and, and obviously uh, Paul Townham. But um, I just think in, in 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 this particular race, it doesn't see it looks winnable, and it doesn't seem to be there doesn't seem to be that much airy pace in the race, and it might suit the the likes of an Irish Point or Sir Gerhard if he the went for the race, uh, maybe an unproven stare. I think looking at the horse himself, uh, Irish Point second last year at uh, Ferryhouse in the Royal Bond obviously behind Marine National. That's really decent form. Uh, certainly his, his victory at entry late in the season was decent as well, over two and a half miles. I absolutely loved uh, his performance up the north and down Royal. You know, he was given £12 to Magical Zoe, who was probably the biggest eye catcher at the Cheltenham Festival last year, second in the Mayor's Novice race. She won it down Royal last year. I thought there was everything in her favour on that occasion uh, up the north. And he... He he just went and won the race and won quite snug in my view. And I think that was over two mile one. 
Um, for like he's everything that a staying horse should be, in my view. He's very straightforward. He settles and he jumps. He has that touch of class as well. Um, and he stayed on very, very strongly. He took her hurdles out as well, David, up the north at say uh, down Royal in that race, which for me made it more of a stamina test. I was surprised. Well, I wasn't surprised because Tiupu went for the Hatton's Grace, but that looked at a decent race, maybe to target for Irish Point as well. It's interesting. In the stable tours at the start of the year, Gordon did say that they're going to try this horse over three miles at some point this season. I wouldn't say it's going to be the stairs, although maybe their hand will be forced if he goes and wins this. Looks, uh, it looks a winnable race to me, and I thought a 13 to win. He's clearly strong in the market as well. I'd, I'd have him as one of the better bets at Leopardstown over Christmas. Yeah, and I think I have to come down on the side of Ron, and I think there's no reason whatsoever to get away from the side of home by the least, simply on, on, on the facts that... Like he's done, he's done very little wrong, and uh, we know he stays, and uh, he likes Leopardstown as well. So I mean, it'll be just interesting. I always like to, I think, go with the the, the proven runner in a race that you know will tick all the boxes. And I think yeah, it's uh, it's an interesting race. And we're one thing to it. mention, David, as well, just uh, the five year old record in the race. Obviously, Irish Point is only a five year old. Maybe that's part of the reason why they might not campaign him over three miles. You know next year, early next year, maybe in the spring. Uh, maybe the uh, the two mile five at entry could be an ideal target after this, mm-hmm. whether he wins or loses. Um, the five-year-old record in this particular race, Monk's Lands, Lieutenant Colonel, Apples, Jade for Gordon, Prince of Scars, and Flory Porter all won this at the age of five. So uh, it might be an easier task than going to Cheltenham in March over three miles. Yeah, well, we're going to find out. It's going to be a cracking race. Is that a Christmas hurdle on the uh, 28th? Right, the final race we're going to look at is the uh, Savills Chase. This, again, is a cracking grade one. And uh, it's on, of course, uh, 3 o'clock at Leopardson on the 28th. Um, Barry, your thoughts on this one? I've uh, probably made it known enough at this stage. Fast or slow. Big fan of the horse, David. Seven years of age. Uh, very unexposed. Interesting. I'd love to see the three of them run. I have a suspicion that maybe Jerry Kalam won't run. Uh, if he they does, said he's going to run, Basil. They, 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 they more or less said it, confirmed. Yeah, uh, like the, Gordon said, the intention is to run at that percent. Wow. Okay. Well, it's going to be an absolute cracker, isn't it? Um, no English representative. I thought stage star would make this a real test if he came over. Paul obviously likes to, to send one uh, to this to, to what was the Lexus chase. Um, so I think that's interesting how the race will be run. Um, fast or slow, seven years of age, he's toppled Gallop and the Champ on two occasions over two different trips on two different types of ground. I think he's the one to beat in here. I'm surprised he's not favoured. Uh, Gallop and the Champ didn't look the same horse, did he, in the John Durkin? Um, you know, was the, so a very good winner of the race last year. You saw his form as a novice over shorter trips, two miles, uh, three furlongs, looked absolutely ideal in the John Durkin for him. And I thought fast or slow, given the pace, he was very fresh. Uh, for the first mile, I think Martin Brazel did say that with JJ Slevin on the show prior. Obviously, he'd been away for that race course gallop at Punchestown, uh, but he was going to come on plenty for that. And seemed to get a little bit outpaced coming down to the last appreciated, seemed to stretch them. But I was just, I was, I loved his attitude, the way he jumped and asked, he's such a sound jumper. And I think that's probably one of his biggest attributes. And I think this horse is fast becoming, David, probably one of the most underestimated horses in training. I think he's the one to beat, and I'd be quite strong on him, 15 to 8. And I suppose earlier in the week, you and I were both talking about this fast or slow. And I suppose, Ron, I'll throw this over to you before we get your thoughts on it. But like, you know, fast or slow, he's trained by Martin Brazel. He really does know the time of day when he has a good horse. And he's shown that over the years. This is a good horse. And that was a good performance last time out. But, you know, I guess I, I think what I'm trying, the point I want to make here is that if anyone else, you know, if Willie Mullins, let's say, was the trainer of Fast or Slow, he'd probably be favoured for the race. Am I right in saying that uh, for this particular race? But what was very, I thought, impressive was the way he won. And surely for the first run of the season, he's going to step forward, you'd imagine, and improve. And they were the vibes you were getting from both the jockey and Martin um, last time out. And that was, you know, this, yeah, he's going to improve. Obviously, he's going to come on and uh, we haven't got to the bottom of him yet. So with all that in mind, Barry has made a very good case for him, I think. All right, I, I have to agree with everything you both said. Um, like It's a good idea if you just look at the John Durkin last year and you look at the John Durkin this year. And Faster Slow was running in the John Durkin last year basically as a novice. He won his chase in, in France when he was a young horse, so he no novice status here. So it was the second run in a chase, essentially. It, no, it actually was. And he 
it was his first run in a chase in Ireland. And he was beating 20 lengths in, in the John Durkin, right? So that was a fine run for with all that context. 12 months later, he comes into the race as a grade one winner. And he's a drifter on the day. Uh, the, the vibe seemed to be, you know, prep run for this, the Savills. Get him around. If he finished second, third, happy days. And he goes ahead and wins. So I think that's a really good way of looking at just how much this horse has improved. And I think he's been excellently handled by um, Martin Brazel. And you're dead right, David. Like whenever he gets a good horse, it's very interesting. Like I think he maxes them out. And obviously a Grand National winning trainer, Cheltenham Festival winning trainer as well. And only a small team. So I think he's really interesting. And I, I agree. I think he should be favourite. I guess there's the, just that respect there for Gallop and Deschamps and all he done last year. But like the jury is out with him now. Like just what happens to these horses when they run in gold cups? It's really interesting. Like and maybe he can get back to his his level from before, or maybe he he doesn't get back to that top level, but he gets somewhere not close to it, and that could still be good enough here. But I wouldn't want to back him to be honest. And uh, it's just very interesting. And then you throw in Jerry Colomb, and uh, I'm as as, as slow as he knows. <laughs> I'm a huge fan of him, and if, nah, if the rain that if the rain that forecast comes down uh, on 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 the night before, Basil is going to be he's not going to have a wink of sleep after his because uh, he's all in on fast or slow here. Um, should be running in the, in the Welsh National as a off top weight. <laughs> <laughs> this is a dual grade one winner two and a half miles as a novice chaser he's only been beaten once so offences that was a bit of a fluke when the real whacker bet, bet him at Cheltenham and uh, I think I love him and especially if, if the ground turns soft here if he's anywhere near them getting to the last I think there's only one winner um, like I, I have huge respect for him like, like I, I did want to Conflade was actually going to be my selection for this race but I'm not going to back him now with Jerry Colombo in the race. I just think it's too hot at the top of the market. And I do think there's a couple of interesting ones in, like Classic Getaway. He could be really interesting now. He, he Like, this is the horse that cost 570 grand as a four-year-old. Hasn't happened for him yet, but he was really impressive <clears> at <throat> Turles. And appreciate his interesting as well up at Tremont. He's very interesting, Ronan. He's the one that, he, he's the one that, he's entered up in the two-mile, one furlong, grade one, and he's also entered up in the three-mile. He's only had one start over three miles. We were on about Chishkin maybe running over the wrong trip. I've been long campaigning for Appreciated to be running over three miles. I thought this horse, even since his bumper days, was, you know, a Gold Cup horse. Obviously, he's nine years of age now. Was second in the Grade 1 novice over three miles at punches down to Ferranilly. But so we've only seen him once over three miles. And I mentioned Stage Star not coming for the race. Appreciated is a good jumper. He likes to get on with things. Could he, if he went for this race, maybe get an easier time? I think he's a big price to place at, well, 16 to 1. I think he'll give you a good run for your money in terms of an each way bet. But as we're speaking, David, just to mention, Faster Slow has gone 9 to 4. He's said drifted a little bit from 15 to 8 since Jerry Kalama has been confirmed he's going to the race. So uh, it doesn't matter for me where, where they run Jerry Kalama. I don't think he's, he's going to beat either of these come March. Or well, that, 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 Basil, that is madness. Like, like you, you're, You've got on this crusade against Jerry Kalama now, but you can't actually believe that. You 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 can't actually genuinely believe that. Well, he was second. He was second in, in in a brown advisory to to the real whacker, who's what ten to one for for a King George. I mean, there was no excuses for him on the day. Everyone's talking about the ride, Jerry Kalam. Maybe he's just not that good, and maybe he's slow. Uh, Ah, but listen, he's not slow. He, he's not slow. I think you're being very harsh on the horse here. No, he's not slow. I think you need to take a pull there and pull back a small bit on the bridle here because I, I think, no, I think, I think, I know, I think you're being harsh on the horse. I think, I don't think he's, he's slow. I think he's a class horse. I think uh, how good he's going to be, I think maybe the connections themselves could be saying, well, look, how good is he? We're finding out all the time, but he can improve plenty. And I think, you know, there could be plenty more improvement. We've spoken about plenty of horses on the show earlier and that can improve. I think he's one that can improve. I, I, I still i am not 100% convinced, but at the same time, I can't come out and say he's slow. Um, I think that's... Well, he, uh, he, look, he definitely hits those flat spots and up and down right. It didn't look like he was getting there. He's a dual and, grade one winner over two and a half miles. Like, who did, yeah. who did he be over two and a half miles at Sandown? Balco yeah, Coastal. Yeah, Balco Coastal and the other, Get the, the other thing, the other, what's the other Henderson horse he beat there ran well at Cheltenham. Um anyway. anyway he, moving he, on. He, he, he beats what did he beat down in Limerick? Down uh, um 
he beat the Galway play <laughs> winner and or the Galway played second, authorized there. I just there. think Jerry Crab, look, look, I, I just think he's going to get found out at this level against these type of horses, and that's just the, the view I have on it. Now, look, at, he, he was a, he was a Grade One winner. In name, anyway, the City Isles at Sandown, over two and a half miles on testing ground. I agree with you, the rain is going to help them, but it might be all over. I, I just think they, Gallop and the Shams, the faster slows of this world, are going to prove themselves to be much better than Jerry Kalam. But I could be wrong. You know the way, you, you know the way at the, the each and every week you're clipping little parts of the show and you're putting them out on Twitter. If this horse goes on to score at Christmas, can we just get uh, that particular piece? Oh, here, David, David oh, there's absolutely class. no chances against yeah. that. that yeah. I, I will be campaigning to, hard something. for this. You might need campaigning to campaigning yeah. hard. I will be. You might need to brush up on your Photoshop skills if you want to start clipping those. Type oh types. no, 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 no! Stop that, <laughs> Ronan. Just one other question that I'd like to touch on what you said. Um, before we, fit, of course, just finish up on on this on the Savas chase about your thoughts on Gold Cup winners and why, you know, the form suddenly goes backwards from that. Why is that, or have the trainers that train these horses even figured that out themselves? Uh, my 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 only guess, and it's not 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 a very scientific thing, David. Is like I was talking to Paul Townend for. Uh, an interview shortly after Cheltenham last season and we're just talking about the Gold Cup and he was like the tempo you go in the Gold Cup is just it's mad it's just it's nothing like you ever experienced as a jockey in any other race and granted there was one Gold Cup was the one the second one he won an absolute tired or album photo that was slowly run but that's very um, unusual yeah, usually yeah. they go really strong and uh, he's like, you know, it's just different. And he said that that was one of the biggest thrills he's had, like being able to take Gallop and Deschamps, travel him, put him in the back, come through and win. And and he's gone right away from Braveman's game at the end. But you could tell, even watching at the time, you can tell this is an absolute all out, everything on the floor type of performance. And I just wonder, does does that take it out of a horse? You know, how many of these seven-year-olds win gold cups and you think, God, they could go on and win two, three more and it just doesn't happen for them, you know, like the War of Attrition, Kicking King, etc. I just maybe it's just one of those races that it leaves a mark on a horse. And when they have to go back to the well, I don't know, maybe they're thinking about it a bit much or saving a bit for themselves. I don't know. And then, look, he could be fine, Gallop in the Champ. That could have been his first run of the season. Maybe he's a bit older now. Maybe he needs a run. Absolutely. I'm 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 open to that being the case, but for now, I'd just be wary of him. That that is my point. Is so he we all in agreement Gallop and yeah. are fast or slow is going to be the f- the fast side of <laughs> yeah, well, I, I just uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're we 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 just we you just wait for next week until we're clipping up the the clips on the on the show. Are uh, we right, going with fast or slow? Is it? I animal? think so. I think so. Yeah, I think he's the horse. I'd I'd like to be on if I was having a bet in the race. Yes, absolutely. Ronan, I go Jerry Clon. Oh. Ronan's going with the slow horse, so that's fine. That's perfect, and uh, that's uh, that's ideal. Right, okay, let's move on because we've so much yet to get through. We're now uh, coming up to the time where we hear from our very special guest <clears> this week, and uh, well, Patrick Mullins and his father, Willie, know plenty about having lots of winners over the Christmas. Barry caught up with Patrick. Let's hear what he has to say about so many of the top runners over Christmas. So delighted to be joined by Patrick Mullins on the Champ Today podcast once again, heading into a busy Christmas period. Patrick, great to have you. Colin Trav started the season well, but I'm sure, Paddy, you're looking forward to rolling out some of the uh, the big close Sutton heavy artillery over the festive period. Yeah, uh, yep. We're sure, look. We've had a we've had a good start to the season. We had a couple of reverses, Gallop in the Champs and in Parry Passe, but lots of the novice chasers have done well. Lots of the novice hurdlers. We've probably been slow on the bumper for front to get going but um you know i think that's not that's not unusual for us we'll uh, hopefully be hitting the ground running at christmas and uh on to drf then and into the spring after that absolutely and we'll come on to the bumper department but the novice department first of all close sutton i suppose have some really exciting types this year paddy with the likes of daddy long legs obviously been impressive il atlantic marazor west and indeed bally burn as well it looks uh, an exciting department once again yeah, uh, very much so. Uh, Daddy Longlegs is very impressive and thorough. Um, you know, he's obviously a, a flatbred, a very flashy type of horse, lots of speed. Um, and Mirrors are west and probably make his season of debut at Christmas. We think he's very good. You know, he's a full butter to Bernie Hollow, very like him in uh, physique, big, strong black horse. 
And, um, you know, Ballyburn got beaten first time up by Firefox, but I wouldn't have been too early there. Firefox had had a, a run beforehand, um, and I would have missed second last in what turned into a sprint. So two very good horses. Um, but I'd imagine when Arofella steps up in trip, he'll uh, he'll improve. And I think he'll he'll have improved from the run as well. So that was essentially a grade one hurdle, really, um, uh, rather than a maiden hurdle. But uh, yeah, we've we've had a lot of a lot of them have um have won, but you know, like Bally Byrne, Tully Hill got beaten the first time as well. I think again he just blew up two miles six first run of the season. Um sometimes we have so many maidens to get out you don't get to choose the the race you know there were two sixes he didn't need to go two six um and it's uh jack kendy was probably very good on the time he uh made it a, a real test and our fella just needed it so i'd expect huge improvement from both him and ballyburn at christmas super and speaking about a test and testing condition il atlantique and, and chapa de Salis. i want to ask you about both of these because Seem to really appreciate conditions, both at Gorham Park and, of course, down in County Tipperary. You were aboard uh, Chapeau de Salil. What sort of uh, feel did he give you on the day? Yeah, well, look, we, we thought, I thought last year that he could be my champ bumper horse, and um, he hung terribly in his first bumper. And then we just couldn't get really get him right after that. He was never looking right, or just couldn't get him back to the work he'd been doing before he ran. Didn't really find any reason for it, but he looks and feels much stronger this year. Um, Look, he 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 won very well. I don't know what kind of race it was. It was probably probably a, 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 a you know, it was a down the country maiden hurdle as opposed to going up to Leprosan or Fairy House. But I think he's got a lot of ability. And Eric, I mean, loved uh, testing conditions. Il Atlantique, he looked very very good at Gorham Park as well. What do you think are his biggest strengths, Paddy? Yeah, uh, look, he he won last year at Christmas and bumper, and then got beaten in two two winners bumpers, but. Both those bumpers were quite dry ground. Um, it was a dry spring last year, and I, I felt he travelled very strongly. But when I had to let him down to, to lengthen and quicken, um, he didn't really let himself down on the ground. Now maybe also uh, going up in triple helped him there. But I think he's got a huge engine. Uh, I think soft ground suits him well. Um, I think he'll have no problem going up in trip. Um, but he does have a very high cruising speed, um, so he will be versatile. But I, I think softer ground and going further and jumping. With all of improvement from last year. Super. Team Mullins look particularly well stocked once again in the uh, Novice Chase Division. Fasal Vega won a hot beginners uh, chase at Navan. Yep, uh, he was very good. Like that, that was again, that was a graded race, really, rather than the beginners. Um, and he's come out of it well. He'll go to Leprosound. He's obviously won there the last two Christmases, so he he likes the place. Um, you know, he's not a, a French horse or a point of pointers. He's a he's a homebred to start off in bumpers. So. I think he's entitled to improve jumping-wise more than maybe other horses. Um, and he was good at Navin. You know, he was a bit careful early on, but the further the race went, the better and sticker he got. Um, so, uh, you know, he should. We'd be hoping that he can add another good one to his list. Mr. Policeman, well touted, obviously, prior to the season. What did you make of his chasing debut at Fairy House? Yeah, look, um, it was obviously a little bit disappointing, but, um, you know, he's a horse that does very good work. Now, the hype has probably overtaken the horse and the work, um, but we do think he's a very good horse, and we're hoping that he could make into a good one horse. Um, with his profile and the way last season went, he only got to run once against, you know, um, experienced horses. He won well without being blowing anyone away. Um, I think there'll be huge improvement uh, from his fairy run, but there needs to be. Is that fitness wise, or would you think his jumping um, might potentially improve as well? I think both. Super. Uh, Blood Destiny, speaking of jumping, he was uh, absolutely electric, wasn't he, over the uh, two mile four furlong at Nace? He was, uh, you know, for a four year old. Um, he obviously enjoys it. He's very slick. Um, he's a very forward going horse. Um, you know, uh, I rode him in the Triumph last year and. I can't remember the horse, John McConnell's horse with a hood sat on our tail up the straight the first time that that he ran his race before he got over the second hurdle. Um, I think over fences in a chase race, there's more jumps than there is in a hurdle race. I'm not really sure why that is, but if you're a good jumper, um, jumping is more of an advantage in a chase than it is in a hurdle. Um, and also it gives you more time to settle because obviously there's more things to look at uh, than in a hurdle race. So I think he'd be a much improved chaser than he was a hurdler. And obviously, fact to file a horse that you know quite well over over the uh, op bigger obstacles this season. He looks interesting. Recruits sent straight over fences as well. 
Yeah, look, he, he was an older horse. Um, Willie was keen to go bumping him last year, and sure, only for a dream to share, he'd have he'd have won a DRF and at at Shetland, but um, uh, that was disappointing. But a, like a dream to share is a flat bred horse who's very quick and um, fact to file obviously is a, is a big chasing type. Um, so you'd like to think, you know, we might have more room for improvement. Um, we decided to go straight chasing with him at a Florida Pearl. Um, he obviously got beat first time out, but American Mike. You know, obviously last year was a right off American Mike, but he's a horse, a high class horse as well. So um, I wouldn't be too disheartened that he got beaten. Um, he's entered in the grade one at Christmas. He could go there um, or he could go back for beginners. But uh, I'd expect him by the end of the season to be competing at the grade one level, no doubt. Yeah, super. I was going to say because he was second in the champion bumper, and uh, obviously um, not short of pace either, Patrick. Because obviously, he won the, was it the two mile four furlong bumper at uh, Leperstown last year? And uh, do you think this horse, in terms of a trip for him, like would intermediate distances be the likely maybe destination in the spring? Um, look, I, th- I think he's a horse that settles very well, um, so that always gives you options going out and trip. Uh, you know. I, I think he could well be a, a three-mile horse, but he, he's not slow, as you said. Like, he was second in the champion bumper and at the DRF bumper. So uh, he'd be well able to come back to two and a half, uh, especially on the new course in in uh, Shetland. But I would have seen him more as, as a three-miler, um, in, in a three-miler with a bit of class in my head. Yes, Indiana Dream. He looks a gorgeous five-year-old. Huge, big horse. Um, I, I thought his performance at Navin was fantastic. And, you know, with so little experience um, to go out and pr- give a performance like that was extraordinary, really. And uh, you know, lots of size, lots of scope, lots of strength. Um, he's pleasantly surprised us both times. So um, hard to know where he'll end up. But, he, uh, you know, he, 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 to look at him, he looks, he looks like a three-miler. But he's obviously got that touch of class, like factor file too. too. And what what do you say about Gaelic Warriors' performance at Punchestown? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was. I mean, look, I, I think I think he was probably going to stride faster than Paul wanted to go all the way. But again, he's a horse that enjoys uh, chasing. But you know, his his maiden hurdle win last year more. He won, I think, it was eighty six lengths or something. So yeah. I think uh, as the season goes on, he relaxes a bit more. Um, look, going right handed is is a big help to him. He's been beaten twice first. That was both times in Cheltenham. Uh, on the old course, which is particularly tight, once in the Fred Winter, once in the Neptune. So, if he was to go for the the Golden Miller, uh, maybe the Turners is called this year, but it's the Golden Miller Chase. Uh, that's on the new course, which is not quite as tight, and maybe that'll be a help to him. Um, but you'd imagine Limerick on the twenty eighth, the Grade One, the Fawheen Chase would look made from the Christmas going right handed soft ground intermediate distance. Uh, he's a horse with a huge engine, he, but he's he's just not. Um, not as simple a, a ride as others. Lossy Mount in the same silks, obviously, uh, for, for Rich Ritchie. Um, is she near a run? Willie, being a four-year-old going five, uh, Willie is thinking he's just going to give them a, a lighter campaign. Um, so he's working back to the Mayor's Hurdle in Cheltenham. El Fabiolo looks to have taken... Over at the stable batting in the two mile champion chase department, uh, he looks he looks like some tank. This horse, yep. Uh, look, sure, he blew everything away in um, the Arca last year. He was very good in the hilly way, giving away a lot of weight on his on his seasonal debut. Um, that race comes a bit close to Christmas, so he won't be running at Christmas. But um, uh, obviously, all roads back to Cheltenham. Could perhaps the two meet prior to Cheltenham? John Bon obviously in the Clarence House. That- could could we have a couple of jewels this year? Do you think? Possibly, uh, the Clarence House is, is on our radar, and John Bond looks like he's going there, so that could happen. A la Shishkin and Energamen before, um, but uh, yeah, he, he won't be running at Christmas anyway. Do you think he compares in any way, physically or mentally, to the current champion? Yeah, look, they're they're both big, strong horses who like to get on with it. Um, and you know there, there's a lot of similarities there in, in every way um you know they they're they're real two milers they they like to attack their fences they like to go along and stride faster than other horses so uh it's great to have el Fabiola there with an argument uh, current on the sidelines how is his recovery going we're very happy with him so far can close sutton topple constitution hill this season could be a big task 
It is. Uh, look, State Man has only been beaten by one horse. That's Constitution Hill. Um, I don't particularly see any reason why we turn it around by Constitution Hill on off day. Um, and obviously, in Parry Pass, he got beaten in the Hatton's Grace, but that was a. I thought that was a good run. I think. Um, I think we just blew up. I think Gordon's horse is probably readier, considering they're going to go straight to Cheltenham now. I'm sure they had him fairly cherry ripe for the Hatton's Grace, and that's what the race looked like. Um, but look, ridden against Constitution Hill, and uh, if unless he has an off day, I don't think anything will beat him. Alaho looks absolutely tailor made, doesn't he, for the King George? That looks uh, a Christmas treat, Paddy, for us all. Looks like it's going to be a cracking race. Um, yeah, look, he's nine rising ten. It's his second run back from an injury layoff. Probably not an ideal profile for a race of that nature. Um, but if he could get back to his level of performance when he won the Punchdown Gold Cup, you know, he, he'd probably be hard to beat. But that's the question. As an older horse returning from an injury, is he still going to have that sparkle? Um, we're very happy with home. That's how we're sending him. Uh, he does jump a little bit left. Uh, that Kosovo tour in the King George two years ago and Kukar beat him. So it won't be easy, but um, he's, ready to, he's ready to rock anyway. Best of luck with that one. How has Gallop been being Gallop and the Champs uh, since the uh, John Durkin? How's he been? Yeah, we're happy with Gallop and afterwards. He didn't seem to jump for whatever reason. From the very first fence, he didn't jump. And because he didn't jump, he didn't travel. Um, and yet he still ran very well. Uh, so... Nothing showed up to why he didn't jump, but maybe just he just had an off day. Um, it wasn't like him. Um, so look, we're trying to get him out at Christmas. The John Durkin brought forward two weeks this year, and that's given us a chance to get him out again at Christmas, which he didn't last year. Um, but fast or slow is a very, very good horse, and he's after beating us the last twice now. So uh, the ball is in our court to try and um, to try and uh, get back on top. Classic getaway. He looked, uh, that was some performance, wasn't it, down in County Tipperary? He was very good. Look, he's the most expensive horse ever come into the yard. Um, he was originally, obviously, in Gordon's. Um, he's a huge price tag. But um, he hasn't been easy to keep right. But when he is right, he's very good. And just in those suits, Patrick, I wanted to ask you about Grange Clear West. Obviously, he's some nice entries. He was good on Chase's debut as well. He was very good. Um, now, he's very good in his debut in Navin last year and then tailed off afterwards. So. Hopefully, we can keep him right this year. But again, uh, he has the engine. He's just not simple to keep right. In the bumper department, uh, what horses, I suppose, are you most looking forward to riding in the coming weeks? Do you always have a couple of nice ones at Christmas? Yeah, we have a good few entered. Um, we've only had one out, really, this year so far. Petite Secret, who, who won at Fairy House. So we have Cantico, uh, who's a diamond boy, won a point-to-point. Uh, we have Joystick, who's an unlucky, went by a bad mistake in a point-to-point. He's a coastal path horse. Um, Sounds victorious is, is uh, Sean's Elise with King's Peak, Hens Toot, Cadwell Saint. Uh, there's, a, there's a good group from there, so we'll get we'll be getting four or five of them out over the Christmas, and that'll give us more of a, a read on where we are with them all. You mentioned Cantico, he definitely looks a, a, a nice recruit, Paddy, obviously, for the Turleys. So, that four year old bumper on St. Uh, Stephen's day, is that would he be maybe the right type for that type of race? He won it in the past, obviously, with Facile Vega. Cantico, he certainly uh, showed a good attitude anyway, didn't he, in his point to point? Yeah, he was very good in his point to point. Obviously, Boy Diamond Boy, the same as, as in Paris Passe. And um, yeah, we have a couple, we've, he's entered He's entered in um, a couple of bumpers there, but uh, I think he's well up to that class. And obviously, the uh, the four miler is uh, the amateur race at uh, the uh, Cheltenham Festival. You won it with Statler, of course, in in recent years. Anything maybe stick out uh, that maybe could go down that potential route this year? One that I wanted to ask you about was uh, Manila Cocooner. He was quite good at Leperstown, obviously, over hurdles uh, when winning a graded race in the past. How's he been, I suppose, since coming back from his setback last year? Good. Uh, he'll run at Leperstown on, over Christmas. Um, yeah, obviously a horse with huge, uh, huge ability. Um, so hopefully we'll get him out at Christmas in a beginner's chase and get him on the road again. Um, my memory of him in the Albert Bartlett was he ran far too keen with Paul. So I'm not mm. sure about running him in the, in the National Chase. He'd want to be a lot more settled. Now, maybe he will be over fences. Um, but my memory of him in the Albert Bartlett wasn't that I'd want to be going another mile with him. Um, but we'll see... Is he more mature now that he's older and jumping the fences? I thought Embassy Gardens was uh, very good in Punchdown, and he's a horse that relaxes, and you need a horse that settles well. Um, so maybe he could be the type, but there's nothing 
nothing I've really, uh, nothing that's majorly stood out to me for it just yet. I wanted to ask you, Patrick, uh, just before we do uh, finish up, uh, in obviously the Chantilly Horse Racing Podcast is proudly in association with uh, Goan Park Racecourse uh, for this national hunt season. How much are you looking forward to, of course, early in the new year, the big day at Goan Park, highest Chase Day 2024 in January? It's always a day to look forward to. It is. Actually, look, it's the, the, the biggest day in our locality down here. Um, Goran do a, a, a fabulous job. It's a race with steeped in history. I mean, you know, the good horses that have won it, Hedgehunter, Arco, Jack Adam. Um, and uh, there's obviously a great, obviously, it, to me, it's one of the best standalone days of the year. Always a great crowd. Um, always a great crowd there. And, uh, you know, we're, we're always trying to have a couple set aside for it. So hopefully we can, we can win it again. Finally, I suppose, Patrick, um, in terms of uh, the uh, Christmas runners, what's the one horse you think that listeners should be keeping on side over the Christmas? Uh, yeah, well, look, it's um, obviously there's a lot of a lot of them are going to be short, but uh, like I said, I, I thought um, Eskel Diamond schooled quite well, um, so uh, he he has a, a hefty price tag, and I think he might live up to it. Right, it is that time, Barry, to. Uh, give you and Mr. Groom, get you up on your pedestals and uh, let the listeners know of uh, the success of uh, last weekend. Let's look before we get the lads' best bets uh, for this weekend. Right, let's see what they did last week for us. And, uh, well, certainly there was no doubt about the winners they had. And they're going to flash up on your screens. We're going to take a look at those now, if Barry can... Did you quite like Odanti in this one, in around the 7-1 to one mark? Tell us why. He's a strong stay in two miler, which to me on the, the the new course, more of a stamina test. The top would, would maybe bring stamina more into it. Venetia Williams horse here, the Sepage, like could just be absolutely thrown in. Really, I think he'd have a great chance here, and he'll give you a run for your money. And I think he's fairly enough priced at the moment in around the seven to one mark as well. So that you'll do for me. A horse called Nurse Susan, I think could be uh, potentially uh, very well treated. This fugitive for for Richard Hobson, and he's just got a really really good record out of all the ones that were in and around the 8 to 1 mark and there's plenty of them there I just thought he was pretty solid now so I've gone for him huge shift uh, Sepage was a winner there as well nor Susan I think someone might have given you the nudge Barry to put that up last week and stole <laughs> someone's thunder not saying who it was but nonetheless it was my first week on so I was put back in my box and all the rest right it's time this week, lads. Keep up the good work. And uh, Ronan, I'm going to come to you first for your your best bets uh, of the Christmas. I have loads of best bets, but I had to whittle them down to three on uh, Basil's advice. So um, I uh, wish her to start in chronological order, I suppose. Um, Caldwell Potter, I'm really looking forward to seeing him. He runs in the, the future champions race, uh, Novice Hurdle, there on the second day at Leopardstown. I think he is really interesting. Like, he's a big price there, 20 to 1. Look, there's loads of nice <clears throat> novices in this. It's it's going to be a really good race if they all show up. Like, Firefox is in there as well. Like, his, his stable mate, Il Atlantique, is there for Paris mentioned him and Patrick Evan mentioned there as well. He He's really interesting. And down memory lane. But, like, essentially, they're all Maiden Hurdle winners. Like and they all look as impressive as each other to be honest. So I don't see why this Caldwell Potter is twenty to one. So if he is declared, uh, does come with that caveat. I think he's really interesting. The race he won at Navin was twelve seconds faster than Jigoro in the first race, who looked quite impressive as well when he won his maiden hurdle for Gordon. So I just think that was uh, just 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 maybe went under the radar, I suppose, David. Um, and <clears> like <throat> he's a like he shouldn't be going under the radar to be honest because he's a full brother to Mighty Potter, you know. Um, and from a really, really high class family, um, the mayor's produced um, French dynamite as well. So, like, I, there's a lot to like about him, and I just think that's a big price. So, he could be underestimated on the day. Uh, Coccolino was a horse that I thought might be a Paddy Power type horse for JP, but his only in entry at Cheltenham is down at Limerick in the Tim Duggan on Thursday. Uh, I just think he's really interesting. He's very lightly raced. He's an eight year old. He'd be nine, uh, turning nine, obviously, in the new year. He's just had a few problems, but this is the first time ever, basically, he's been able to run three times in succession. Um, so they've finally been able to get a good run with him. Uh, he won a maiden hurdle at Navin when he beat El Barra. That this is going back three years ago now, nearly. Um, so he was quite useful over hurdles to be able to win a maiden hurdle. But 
and obviously just had a few problems since. But I just think he's really interesting now. He fell at Goran just when he was getting into the race uh, on his seasonal debut. And if you look back at Punchestown, he was in behind Ida's boy in a really good handicap chase. He made a mistake there at the third last just when he was getting going and uh, probably just cost him. But he was only beating five lengths in the end, staying on really strongly. I think he's really interesting off a mark of 131. And needless to say, if the money does come from him, uh, definitely keep an eye out for that because uh, with the owner and everything green and gold running down a limerick just just would be really interesting so uh the third one i'm going to go for is flooring porter uh i know basil will get sick at the thought of this uh but that's it's a very good uh way of um explaining this because people like basil are very prudish when it comes to these types of horses going over fences that they've ran so many times over hurdles etc but you have to say what you see and what i see with flooring porter is a horse that Ran all over Broadway boy at Cheltenham. Like, you know, completely put him in his place. Won basically hard held. And we've seen what Broadway boy has done since. He's won twice over the course of distance. People talking about him as a possible brand advisory hope. Well, Florian Porter just, just beat him all ends up. Now, you go back to the punches town run. And even going into that run, Gavin Cromwell was saying, look, we're taking a chance here. We're going back the other way, the way he doesn't want to go. And we'll see what happens. And he gave his rider an absolute horror right like, like it was he did well to even finish the race never mind finish third so i was going to say you could just like wipe that run off his off a cv altogether but you could actually use it as an upgrade to be honest with you and back at leopardstown where he's already a grade one winner over hurdles and has a pretty good record and i just think he'd be underrated again here he'd probably get bigger than three to one on the day given the people uh um, we walking around like Basil thinking that you know they they have a higher class and novice chaser around you the place. Think Corpus so, uh, Cross will have him for breakfast, no? Corpus Cross is even going to run here. Like he probably go for the his favorite, the uh, two and a half mile down in uh, Limerick. No, no, I think he's going to Leperson. All right, okay. right. So you're you're just guessing on a, a possible non-runner there. So we'll see. We'll see if that that actually comes across. Well, I don't think he's going to take on Gaelic Warrior down in Limerick now somehow. Well, yeah, well, you know, you, 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 I'd, say, I'd, say, three, I'd say three I'd say three mile at Leperstown, Corbett's Cross, on this type of ground, given the fact that we have all this rain focus, is probably, I, I think Corbett's Cross will beat him. Um, but look, you know, Florin Porter, his record at, at, at uh, Leperstown over hurdles is good, but this is this different discipline is chasing. My goodness, there's going to be some clips going up next week on Twitter, isn't there? <laughs> the credentials could be absolutely smashed to smithereens and the show could become non-existent after next week. But thankfully, me and Ronan will continue on no matter what. We will buy the rights off you for champ.ie. I, right, the floor is yours, Mr. Doyle. Your three best, or your best bets for the Christmas. My three bets for the, for the Christmas. I've actually put in four, Dave, so. Of course, you have to get in an extra you, one. Yeah, you only yeah. told me I could been have three. Been, three. been generous, been generous. Um, you, you only we'll told me I could have three. We'll start with the we'll start with the the pre Christmas treat. We'll go with Lucia in the uh, the three thirty five at Ascot. It's obviously the big handicap last race on the uh, the Ascot card uh, this uh, weekend, and it's look, it's a competitive race. I just thought ten to one was more than fair about a horse that uh, I quite fancied actually last year for the the mayor's. Novice hurdle at Cheltenham, and she's had two runs in Cheltenham now, and but uh, she's been quite weak in the finish up the hill. I think Ascot is going to suit her that little bit more. She's off 136 as well, lads, um, which I think you know if you said that to Nicky Henderson last year, even the start of this year, he's talking about you know moving her up and uh, running her in in graded hurdles and 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 maybe ending up at the mares in, in March itself. So I think off 136, she could be very well treated. The drying ground is going to help her. Um, her last couple of starts have been on soft ground. I thought she ran an absolute cracker in the Great Wood. I think the form of that race as well is worth following. And um, we're going to come on to Luckaway because I have him in here as well. He finished second in the Great Wood. Lucia was third, and um, a bit of Lord. I mean, she's she's eight pounds better off. Which said uh, the winner of the race who's got up eight pounds in the ratings. She's on the same mark. And look at the form as well. Go Dante Sanagino. They both come out and won since, so the form is franked. I just think there's a lot to like about her, and I think she was travelling best in that Great Wood turning in. And uh, ten to one, I think it's uh, I think it's a cracking price. I have to say, uh, in that uh, three thirty five at Ascot, look away. They're they're not stick. They're not going down the handicap route with look away. They're they're chucking them into what was the Tallworth at entry, of course, the first renewal of this uh, graded race on Saint Stephen's as they are Boxing Day. Um, on the uh, the 26th and look away seven door has come in for plenty of support again same form lines run a cracker of the great wood I thought uh, well 
a strong stay in two miler. The rain is going to suit him. It's going to be plenty of rain over the next couple of days at uh, Aintree. And I can't see him out of the mix. I thought seven to one was, was, was a very fair price about him. Um, and he's officially rated 136 as well. I think uh, it's not a handicap, but he's rated the best horse in here. And the cup, he's open to, to plenty more improvement. Black Bamboo. I think Jerry Hannon will have an absolute field day uh, with this one um, if it wins. That's uh, on the uh, one in the 145 at Leperstown on St. Stephen's Day. Um, some really decent form. Was, was only beaten four lengths to high class hero of Woody Mullins. Uh, over a longer trip, it's uh, officially rated 128. I thought it could be competitive uh, off that type of mark for John Murphy. Certainly does make appeal. Michael O'Sullivan um, has ridden this horse on, on this last couple of starts and uh, obviously knows the horse quite well. I wouldn't be surprised if he takes the ride. Could get a nice price. Black Bamboo stepping back in trip, David, off its current mark of 128. I thought it could be very, very competitive indeed. Yes, well, uh, a nap selection still to come. But before we get to those, and if we're just uh, flashing up Barry's best bets again for you, Lucia, uh, each way 10 to 1 on uh, Saturday. Look away 7 to 1 at Aintree. Black Bamboo each way at Leopardson and the 26 and Gars the So uh, 10 to 1. And uh, Ronan's uh, festive best bets up there. Coccolino at Limerick on the 28. Caldwell Potter, nice price each way currently for the 145 and the 27. And Flooring Porter, uh, 145 at Leopardstown on the 29th. Just, uh, just give us a little insight before we head into our final ad break on the, the chance for our listeners to win that fabulous prize uh, given to us by Gorham Park ahead of a trip to the Tiestes. Yeah, Langton's overnight stay. It's important, as we keep saying, to book the Friday as well as the Thursday off work. Uh, you've an overnight stay the night of the Tiestes. And, of course, as well, it's important to note that uh, there is, of course, uh, transport uh, to and from the city. So if you are staying in Kilkenny on that night, uh, it's uh, very easy to get out to the course on Tiestes Day. You'll get free admission and uh, one night's uh, B&B, bed and breakfast uh, for two, to Tiestes Chase Day on the 25th of January. So certainly uh, look forward to that. Can't wait to be down there. And I think uh, on Tiestes Day, David, it's going to be myself and yourself down there. Yeah, I'm thinking uh, once the contracts are signed and the uh, first payment comes in, yeah, absolutely, we'll be there. Right, let's head into our final ad break before we come back with the nap selections for the Christmas festival. Gorn Park Racecourse, the premier racetrack in the southeast of Ireland, is located on the outskirts of Kilkenny City. Gorn is your number one choice for corporate days out stag and hint party events and an overall great local racing experience known as the race that stops the county the famous Goffs Thiestes Chase 2024 takes place on Thursday the 25th of January and the finish of the Goffs Thiestes invitation only and Ruby Walsh on the near side for Willie Mullins seventh win of the race invitation only has beaten out for his own with packed crowds expected once again this January, you can book your early bird tickets online today. Visit gorenpark.ie online, click the link in the champ.ie podcast video description, or scan the QR code on screen to purchase right now. Eddie and the team look forward to welcoming you all to Gorham Park Racecourse this winter. Yes, yeah, it's going to be a cracker, Tyus. They're really looking forward to going to Gorham Park that day. And uh, you'll be able to get signatures signed by uh, Barry Doyle. Ronan Groom will be also uh, available for signatures on the day. And those fans, uh, of course, of Jerry Kalam, you'll also get your uh, maybe winning race card from Leopardstown signed by the man that said he's slow. All of these possibilities are on the cards for us because we can manage this. Oh, I can't wait. Slow as a wet week, which is what exactly oh, stop, it's going to be. Stop. Right, it's Christmas time. We're in that festive mood and it is naps time, gentlemen. And uh, firstly, Ronan, your selection and nap pick for Christmas. Yeah, David, I'm napping Jody Ted in the uh, Paddy Power Handicap Chase uh, 3 o'clock Leopardstown on the 27th. Uh, for all the reasons I've mentioned above, I wanted to put up a decent price. Um and uh, he just ticks all the boxes. I think he's a really progressive horse. I could see him going off close to favour, to be honest with you. Um, what he's done, he's basically coming here off a career best, two career bests, 
and um, been laid out for this race since he won very handsomely at Limerick. So uh, very much looking forward to seeing him. And in a competitive race, I, I do admit that obviously there'll be loads laid out for this, but he uh, struck me as the one with the uh, most appeal. So gone for him. Right, Barry, you're not pick. We could get the uh, the dream, as Ronald Groom suggested it would be, the uh, the Paddy Power Handicap Chase and Welsh National Double Up on the Champ Today podcast. Because mine, I'm going to go with uh, the Welsh National, Dave. I uh, mentioned, obviously, Autonomous Cloud, which was the horse that uh, Colin Tizard mentioned back in 2020 as a horse to follow its career. Well, this could be the time for Autonomous Cloud, owned by, of course, Terry Warner and the McNeil family. It runs in the Welsh National 250 on the 27th and 7 to 1. Has been well supported now, in fairness. Has been probably one of the best backed horses in the race. And I wouldn't be surprised if it uh, went off close to favour on the day. Rona mentioned being laid out for the race. This has been laid out for the race. Um, has uh, some decent form, as mentioned. Both uh, chase wins have come left handed. It's stepping up and trip, obviously, six furlongs uh, from three miles, like some of these are. But both wins over fences have been on really testing ground. This horse is, uh, is a bit of a monster now. He's fairly imposing. Jumps well, stays well. And uh, I think uh, he's the ideal type for this race. He's four pounds well in as well, just to mention. I did say that Nassalam is well in in the race as well. And Roland mentioned one other, but that 49 mil rain scheduled uh, between now and the Welsh National and what's already soft ground is tailor made for it, I think. Yeah, and my nap for the Christmas is going to be Alaho and the King George. And uh, I just like to highlight before the price flashes up. I gave this to Mr. Doyle last week at odds of six to one, but it's now six to four. So obviously, Grinch, uh, the Burns. professionals have listened. They have listened <laughs> and they knew what was coming. And uh, those that got involved and took that six to one, now it's six to four. But listen, a six to four winner at Christmas, there's nothing at all wrong in it. I think it's going to be a cracker. I think Brave Men's Game will probably lead over the last. And Alaho just gets a cracking jump on the inside and up he goes to win six to four nap. And you can put that on Twitter next week as well. We can clip that out and just leave it next week. <laughs> right, uh, don't forget to subscribe to champ.ie. And, uh, you know, and uh, we look forward to reading and seeing all your five cast selections. Uh, uh, for the Christmas ahead. I think uh, we've come to the end of the show and I think uh, all we'd like to say is wish all our listeners a really, really happy and more importantly, a prosperous uh, Christmas. They are, of course, the five races uh, for the five casts uh, over the Christmas as well. And uh, good luck to you. And of course, that lucky winner of that trip to the Tiestes and that prize at Langton's Kilkenny, that draw is going to be made on the 29th of December. Gentlemen, it's been really entertaining. We found out that some horses are fast and we found out some are slow on the show today. And let's see, who, let's see who's going to be right over the Christmas. We'll see you all very, very soon. And happy punting and a happy Christmas.